All right, here we go. So I'm David Walker. Most of you know me, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in my background. I'm a business attorney. Um, I love helping businesses. Uh, I've been doing it for 23 years now. It's a long time. Um, I love it. I enjoy it. Uh, I have great clients. I've seen my clients achieve great heights. And if anything, they've inspired me to do the things that I would like to do uh, in this venture. So um, just to refresh, uh, this is not going to be a unmute and talk over me session. What it's going to be is a chat session if you have any questions. So from 7 to 7.30, it'll be solid lecturing content. And then at 7.30, we can have an open mic when everyone can sign off. Uh, I'll probably be doing more of these as we get close to the public launch. But today is just to say to hi to family and friends, take pictures of you on the Zoom so we can exploit it later. So everybody who's on here, know that you're getting recorded and you probably be uh, on our WeFunder page at some point. So hopefully you blur your screen or um, block out your camera if you want it by the FBI, because there are some federal agents on here. And so I'm not gonna say who, <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is sort of a pre-offering leading up to uh, what will be a public offering of an opportunity to invest in a bottle water plant that I'm building. So I'm going to give you a background of sort of how I got started. We'll go through the investor presentation deck and the investor website. And then lastly, we'll kind of do some current events and things that we're currently doing right now leading up to the fundraise. Also, you will have a link um, that we'll put up that'll give you a chance to book a 15 minute call with me if you have specific questions. But I need to be very, very clear. I'm looking for money. This is an investment presentation. This is not donation. I'm not looking to you know, give out a free uh, pair of shoes with every investment. <laughs> I'm not looking to you know, um, take away anybody's charitable donations. This is a chance for you to make money. And my job is to convince you that I'm the person that's gonna help you make the money and you're gonna get your money back. So if you have questions, fire away. Again, I have to take this public. This is a safe forum where I expect to have questions, but I also expect people to uh, you know, be a little reasonable <laughs> and be easy. There's a lot of moving pieces in this, pro in this project, but none of them are too hard to overcome. First, the wall behind me, I'm here at our offices at Starwalker Industries. Um, we, where we ship, uh, excuse me, where we process a lot of our bottled water orders. Um, my staff who's on here or may be on here somewhere, I told them they did not have to participate tonight because I don't pay for overtime. Instead, they're just going to sit here and listen and make sure I do everything technically correct. They may jump in now and then and tell me that my mic is muted or let more people into the conference room. Um, but anyway, we're going to walk you through the site that starts all of this. And this is the site you're gonna to go to to get all the information you need related to this fundraise. Again, questions in the chat, I'll answer the chat. And I'll answer the questions as I go along. So in general, there are four investor questions that you have to answer if you go to raise capital. Um, one is sort of, what do you do? The other one is, why are you good at it? And then and the other one is, uh, how much money do you need? Um, and then lastly, what does the investor get for it? So what we have here is um, a presentation that is gonna answer all four of those questions. It's gonna answer, what do we do at Starwalker? Why are we good at it? How much money are we looking for? And what does an investor get for it? So one of the things that we'll start with is this video. And if uh, we're gonna share this video, hopefully the Black people will be at the table when it comes to water. We're gonna build our own plant drink our own bottled water, we turn our own bottled water and create our own closed loop recycling systems in our own neighborhood and never be left out the conversation again. My name is David Walker. I grew up in a tough part of Detroit and along the way, I've got a couple lucky breaks in life. I built a 22 year career working with startup and small businesses in corporate law. Six years ago, I walked into my first bottled water plant, just fell in love. Synchronicity of the machines, the efficiency of it, but I started to see things in the system that I thought could be improved. So we saw what happened in Flint and Texas. I had distributors asking me for 10 truckloads of water. Here I am in Atlanta. I said, why are we not manufacturing locally? We could create what they call a closed loop recycling system. Buy our bottle locally, drink it locally, bring it back 
locally and we'll give you money back for it. And I'm looking forward to convincing you that we're going to do it together. Hey, 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 you got like that. <laughs> so that's the introduction video. The key site that you want to know, that you want to go to, and I can put it um, here, is wefunder.com slash Starwalker Industries. If you want to uh, go watch that video again and see Cheryl and the kids and everybody else, you pause it. They look great. Um, that's that's our Christmas photo this year. So that way we don't have to send one around. Everybody's there. That photo, that video was taken about two weeks ago. So it's fresh. And everybody looks just, just as fantastic then as they do now. So uh, what does Starwalker do? We basically sell by the water. We sell it by the truckload. And we do it with a fantastic team. We dedicated. We have a dedicated staff of, of people who believe in positivity. They believe in integrity, and they execute our game plan fantastically. Uh, I'm very proud of them. They've been able to over six years grow our business steadily. Um, and in selling a bottle of water, I'm sort of the middleman. Uh, the manufacturer is the top person, and the distributors are the other people. So I've developed brands, uh, integrity, which some of you know. Um, may have seen this early. A lot of you who had early uh, engagements with me with water and used to get cases of this. And the other one is a positivity, which is our alkaline water brand. And if you haven't gotten it already, get it. Think positive, drink positivity. So we've done that over six years and been able to grow our business in the distribution section, developing brands, going out and marketing. We have national distributors. So our manufacturer has 11 plants across the country and we ship our truckloads from the manufacturer directly to our distributor. So we get an order from a distributor, we place the order with the manufacturer, the manufacturer makes the water, and then when the water's ready, we have someone come pick it up from freight and carry it to the distributor. This uh, truckload, just so you know, is about uh, 20 pallets of water. 20 pallets of water is about 26,000 of these bottles in one truckload. It weighs 45,000 pounds. It's the heaviest thing on the road because water is so heavy. So you're transporting that water across the country to a distributor who breaks up those 26 pallets and then puts them on freight trucks that sends them over to your grocery stores, et cetera. Now, the process for making water is what we call reverse osmosis. It's that's when you uh, take the water from the municipal tap, right? The plant takes it from the tap, they get paid and they send it through a three inch pipe into their plant and then they send it through a series of filters called reverse osmosis they add minerals to it and then they bottle it it's all done very efficiently you can get a truckload of positivity done in about an hour so it's a very efficient system um, but there are a lot of inefficiencies that we've seen that i've seen over time in dealing with this one is that um, your water that you all your bottled water comes from the private sector there aren't any public bottled water manufacturers. So what happens is, and what's happened to us and it, it repeatedly, whether it was Flint, Texas, Alabama, you name it, is that we would oftentimes have people call and say, hey, you know, do you have any water? And this is the government, FAA, et cetera. And they literally give me a credit card for me to ship truckloads of water all over the country. Hey, can you send 10 truckloads down to Florida to go to Puerto Rico? Can you send 15 truckloads down to Texas? I sent almost 20 something truckloads to Texas this last time. And this is a person that goes through Starwalker and I have to arrange with these manufacturers on how to get it there. And so a lot of times we don't know this, but we're relying on our reserve, reserve resource through another manufacturer. Not to mention if you go into the store to pick up a case of water and look where it was processed through reverse osmosis, you'll see California, Wisconsin, You'll see it's made all over the country and there's big, big giant firms doing this. So when I decided to get into this business, I thought to myself, why is it like that? Like, why don't we just make it smaller, closer to home? And the engineers that brought me into this took on a challenge. I said, I don't want to build a big plant. I want to build a small plant. I want to build a plant where I can just generate enough money for my local market and do it in a highly efficient manner and make contracts, not with distributors, but with local retailers so they can have real-time delivery of water and you can brand the water according to um, your local initiatives and drives. Uh, but that wasn't enough. Uh, another downside of all of this water being shipped from these big plants is the plastic doesn't come back. It doesn't come back. When you guys get this bottled water and you throw it into the blue container, 
that blue container is going to take this water and make what's called dirty recycling. They're going to mix it with other things. And this bottle getting mixed with those other things can never become a bottle again. It becomes single use plastic. So furniture, clothing, you know, hell, NFL stadiums, <laughs> the turf is, uh, is this stuff. So, but it can never become a bottle again. However, if you take this bottle and you put it together with this bottle, these are products called PET1. So if you ever see people with the triangle recycling, there's numbers one through seven, I believe. Uh, number one is the best product to be recycled and made back into a bottle again. So if you kept these bottles together and recycled them, you could actually create this. It's not what you think. <laughs> this is uh, a pack of what we call virgin and post-consumer resin um, pellets. This is a blend. And so what they do is they, they shred these down, they shred the plastic down into this pellet. This pellet ultimately gets blown into what's called a preform. The small, there's smaller preforms for the other bottle, but this is a bigger bottle preform. And then ultimately the machine blows out the preform and makes this. So if you can get these bottles turned into this, it turns into this, turns into this, you can see the closed loop recycling there. So what we've done is challenged our engineers to come up with the most efficient way to get that done. And we think we have it. And that's what this presentation is about. It's about building a local small bottled water plant that allows you to sell locally, uh, buy it locally and bring it back locally. And what we've done is we've implemented a return and what we call reverse incentive or reverse um, vending or incentivized um, um, recycling is we've got, we're giving 25 cent back on our bottles that come back like this. And then we're gonna offer 10 cent back on the bottles that come like this. That allows you to have ventures with local hotels, local retailers, et cetera, in which the bottles can be collected and brought back to the facility that we can also ultimately grind them down, melt them into pellets, and then create preforms again. Now that whole process will not happen at our plant, at least not yet. What will happen is we'll collect those bottles and they bundle them and we ship them off and we create what's called recycled PET. California has already implemented a series of laws that requires a lot of bottled water, bottle water manufacturers to use recycled PET, but they're all complaining because there isn't enough left. Why? Because when you throw this bottle into the blue bin, which you should do, because that's the minimum, <laughs> but once you do that, that's not recycled PET. Recycle PET is when we all come together like this, keep these bottles and this plastic separate from other um, uh, PET cycles and then make, um, grind them up and make those pellets we talked about. So that's essentially what Starwalker Industries is trying to do is build this closed loop plant where you can build these bottles efficiently. Now, that plant to build a plant costs $15 million. I don't have it. <laughs> so I, I have to find ways to, to build this plant, right? And you have funding. So there's SBA funding out there. There's different funding mechanisms you can use, but a lot of them require you to have a certain percentage, right? They want you to put up 10, 15%, 20% of the amount that you need. And that's where you usually go out and have equity fundraising. That's what I do as an attorney. People come to me, Dave, I need to raise 2 million, 3 million, 4 million. And we put together investor documents and we go out and we have a fundraising offer for people to invest in the company. They take the money into the company and use it to finance whatever project they're doing. Well, in this case, um, that would be the case normally for me building the plant. And it's probably where I was headed over the last five years, right? It's just, hey, I'll get to the point where I'm ready. I'll go out to the market. I'll pitch to a bunch of accredited investors. Accredited investors are wealthy people people who make over $200,000 a year and who have an, and or has a net worth of a million dollars. So you might, if anybody here has done any significant investing, they've filled out this accredited investor questionnaire because it's highly regulated in the SEC to go out and offer securities. Well, Obama changed that in 2012. In 2012, he adopted the Jobs Act, which said that, hey, I wanna create a system where companies can go out and raise money in their community for local projects. And I want you SEC to put in uh, rules and regulations to make that happen. It never happened. <laughs> well, it happened, but it took a long time. So the SEC kept putting out rules that were just so cumbersome on the person raising money that you might as well try to be a public company, right? You had to have audited financial statements. And then the limitations on which you could actually invest were very low. 
in terms of how much money you can raise. So it's like $500,000 audited financial statements. That's not enough money to get audited financial statements. Slowly but surely, they figured it out. They actually said, we'll actually license platforms. These are crowdfunding platforms that offer people equity in the company. Again, not donations, not anything like that, but actual chance to invest in the company. And you platforms, you will one, bet the company to make sure the company is legit. And two, you will bet the investors to make sure they fall either in an accredited or unaccredited category. So these platforms are out there. And for a long time, they were building up. And then most of them sat dormant because no one really understood crowdfunding. A lot of people kept thinking of it as the uh, other kind of funding where you do donations and things like that. But in this case, you have equity crowdfunding that says to the average person, hey, if you want to invest a small amount of money into a company, put it into our portal, we'll make sure the company is legit, you get all the information, and then we'll take care of the securities for you so that you can be treated as if you are a sophisticated investor. So because of that, and because I really feel like this is a community project and it has to be done with just more than me and some accredited investors, I wanted to offer this to the community first particularly people that was in my close circle of family and friends and build out slowly from there. So you on this call are critical components to making this happen. And the traction that we get on this um, Zoom and the questions and the things that lead up from here are only gonna get bigger over time. So long story short, the platform goes live to the public sometimes at the end, sometime near the end of April. And so from now to the end of April, I basically can pitch to family and friends and convince them to invest into this company, at which point in time it'll go public. Second thing is they offer incentives for you to invest early. So think of it as a discount. So if you invest early, you'll get almost two and a half times better rate than the public will get when they invest. Actually, I should modify that. When I get to 100,000 or when the, when the company gets to $100,000 of investment, it kicks into the next level. So I shouldn't say the first people in April will get that discount. Mostly the first $100,000 will get that discount. The total fundraise in this WeFunder is $4.6 million. It will likely end up being 5 million, which is the max, but we will stay on the platform as long as we can. But at some point, if I don't get to the number I need to get to, we'll have to move it off the platform or take it to the accredited investor market. Accredited investors can still invest through this platform, but we have to have a separate offering for accredited investors. That's something that I'm not looking forward to doing <laughs> because I've sat on the side of the investor and I know what kind of questions they're gonna bombard me with and things that they're trying to do to knock down the valuation. Um, but at the same time, it may be a necessary evil. But before I went down that road, I wanted to give everybody a chance to um, participate at this level. So what I'm going to walk you through now is the WeFunder platform where you guys can go back and see all the things that I'm about to show you by just simply typing in that link. And then I'm going to show you how to invest. So I'm going to share my screen here. Okay. So this is the platform. This is the video that we talked about um, that you saw earlier. And then you have highlights. Some of the highlights of the company is that we'll be able to make a bottle. And I'll show you this bottle. This is the uh, Positivity Alkaline bottle here. Uh, this is in our uh, three liter bottle that we'll be able to make for around 80 cents. And then we'll have a uh, bottle like this that we'll be able to make around uh, 30 to 40 cents. And this will sell for a dollar. This will sell for a dollar 50 roughly. But it's going to make money. We have a 25 cent return for the big bottle. And then we have a um, 10 cent return for the other bottle. So um, what we do here is, is about the team. I mentioned this when we first started. We have a fantastic team of people. Uh, Greg Kirshner, the chief engineer, I've been working with him for six years. He's the one who introduced me to the business. He's a fantastic engineer. His company has done projects for Coke, Pepsi. They're the ones who ordered the blow motors and the manufacturing equipment for Coke and Pepsi, and they're the ones behind the idea of how we can efficiently build something like this and make it uh, small enough to fit in a small community of 50,000 square feet. Bernard Coleman is our legal counsel. He handles all the SEC things. Uh, Randy, I mean, excuse me, Andrew is our CFO. He's been with me since I started. Shar is uh, our chief marketing officer. She's probably on this call somewhere. 
telling me I'm doing something wrong, <laughs> but I probably can't find where she's telling me it, so I'm ignoring her. <laughs> then there's Jada, who actually helps with the logistics of making sure that our truckloads end up where they are. Like I mentioned before, there's four questions every company looking to raise capital must answer, and that is, you know, what does Starwalker do? And you can, you know, I've talked about it before, we're a bottled water company that's into distribution and manufacturing, was made as successful with the truckloads, uh, how much money we need. We talked about the $46.6 million and sort of our EBITDA expected to be about $35 million per year when we get this open. We'll actually be able to sell out capacity once we break ground. And then lastly, uh, what does the investor get for it? Um, in this early stages, as I mentioned, you'll have a discounted round, but overall, it'll be a two-year loan that will accrue interest at 8%. And then after the two years, it will convert into equity of the company. So the equity that the first 100,000 commits to will be about 10 million in valuation. And then the rest of it will commit at about 25 million. So essentially $5 million for about 20% of the company. This is the full business plan. You can click on here and see a full business plan. This gets updated all the time though. So there'll be a version number and a date at the bottom of it. I'm not gonna click in it because it's gonna open up windows that I'm not ready to deal with and PDFs and all this other stuff. <laughs> you guys can go back here and look at it. I just wanna scroll through so you can see it. Then you have um, the team. We mentioned this, uh, some, of the, some of the manufacturing process. There's some video about closing, recycling and returning it. And then we talk about our distribution division, which is the integrity and positivity. That's all here as well. Integrity has been around for six years. Uh, uh, positive alkaline water, most of you probably know, is uh, our high pH uh, alkaline water. If people were in the health, fitness, valley illnesses, love the alkaline water, which we will also make at the plant. You can order some now. So if you don't invest, at least order a case of positivity. Um, and then some of our uh, social media influences, we have some great uh, partnerships with DJ Envy and DJ Chaotic out of New York and uh, Dallas, respectively. And then we've done a lot of uh, corporate events here in Atlanta and we've grown. So again, we need four, how much money do we need? 4.6 million, starting with the fundraise, we'll ultimately uh, end up with an SBA loan to build the plant. We have a couple locations here in Atlanta that we're looking at. And then what do you get for it? You'll get uh, a, a note that'll accrue interest at 8% and then convert into shares of the company. And then we have some perks that we'll talk about over here if you choose to invest. Um, and well, actually they're right here. So, you know, the WeFunder encourages you to do stuff like this. Even though I said this is not a sort of donation uh, situation, they still encourage you to do things like, you know, offer perks and incentives. So if you guys got that 10,000 laying around, you'll get a free case of positivity delivered to you for 24 months. So I think that's a good deal. I think I'm going to pay for that, that 10,000. That sounds like a good deal for me. And then also here's a PDF where you can also download the business plan when you want. This business plan says version three. 31521. By the time we're public, it'll probably be version 8, 9, 10. Things are moving all the time in this sector and then during this fundraise. But I also want to take you over to um, this side of it, which I know everyone's interested in, which is the um, investment side. So I'll take you to um, this and you say, okay, Dave, I'm interested. What do I do? You go to this page, it'll give you the perks that comes up. You say, well, I'm not sure, Dave. I just want to do $100. Please start with $100 because they're not taking money out of your account. They're not going to take money out of your account. They're not taking money out of your account. They just want to get a feel for how much momentum I have. So you can stay, you can, if you say, I don't trust you, Dave, I still want to just put 100, you can put 100. You click invest, you put in your name, your email and the password and you're into the system. Once you get into the system, you'll have a login like this. You'll have a, a portfolio. You can put your picture in. You have a watch list of other investments and you'll see Starwalker, your $100. You can always go in here and edit your amount. I want to make it 100,000. Again, they're not taking the money out. They'll explain that to you when you attach your account and when you get things set up. You can also cancel at any time. So if you want to put in a number like 1,000 or 5,000 and change your mind, you can cancel. You can also, what they'll eventually do is ask you, hold on, my, my, uh, my membership logged out, but eventually, again, you go here, right? You go to your profile, you go to your portfolio, and you're back here again. This is your portfolio and your investment. But eventually, you can uh, attach your, um, how much cash you put in for other investments. You can link a bank account, and then your banks that you put in here. Again, added a bank. This is all secure. This is not a 
fraud. They're not going to use your information. When you add a bank, they actually pull up um, your bank login information for your respective banks. So you don't, they don't ask you, you just go right to your bank and put in the information. Again, they're not going to pull money out of your account. They're not going to pull money out of your account. They're not going to pull money out of your account. So the question becomes, well, Dave, when are they going to pull money out of your account? They're going to pull money out of your account when we go public and we get to the public part. That's when we'll pull money out of your account. So from now till then, they, they, they pegged me with saying, Dave, we want to see how much momentum you can get with family and friends and how much they'll commit, even if it hasn't been to the point of pulling the money out of their account. But this site also has a couple of other functions. It has updates. So as you see some of the things that led you up to this call, we're able to post information in here to keep you updated. So if everyone had a question on your respective you know, investment or you had a question about what we're doing, you can go to updates, what people say. Somebody said scared money don't make money. <laughs> but you can actually uh, put your comments in here. And this is also some people who were kind enough to vouch for us to get us to this next stage. We're, we're probably about 79, 80% through the stage. We still need to get reviewed financials, things of that nature. You can also ask a question here. A lot of people say, Dave, I have questions. I don't want to you know, say it in front of everybody else. I don't want to embarrass you. Nothing's going to embarrass me. Ask a question in the chat. Ask a question here. Whatever you like to do, it's OK. Again, this is the early stages. I'll probably have other sort of events. Oh, the lights are out. <laughs> I'm going to turn the light back on. We have environmental soundness here, OK? It goes out automatically when you're not, no one's around late. So this is lead sustainability. So I'm glad I took that pause to recognize our environmental consciousness. <laughs> yes, Char, the lights did go out. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is the, that's the presentation. You know, that is it. And it's not, it's pretty straightforward. If you love engineering, if you love manufacturing, if you love recycling, you love all of this. How do I know it's going to work? We actually offer $3 for each case of positivity return. And we have a lot of loyal customers who love that. And they grab the bottles from their kids and they make sure that they bring them back to get their $3 off on their next case. This, the, the country's hungry for doing something about plastic. Let's talk about why is it plastic, right? People say, why don't you do water in cardboard or in glass or in aluminum? It's too expensive. It's just too expensive. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You, you, you break glass, aluminum's expensive to produce. You're paying four or $5 for a bottle of water because it's made of aluminum. Plastic isn't the problem. People are the problem. And people who are educated and who can make good decisions can make the problem better. Not only do local uh, manufacturing uh, help with the local economy, it also creates a sense of local optimism and local um, uh, pride in terms of having labels that identify your city or you know, uh, a, a certain brand or mission you're trying to push throughout your city's agenda. We've actually been in conversations with City of Flint as well as City of Atlanta about building a plant for them. Again, this plant is only gonna feed about 40,000 people if everybody drank from the plant every day, which they won't. So I think we have a bigger scope of about 200,000, but the city of Atlanta can probably fit six of these plants. We, they're, perfectly, they're purposely designed to be small, 30 to 50,000 square feet because you can place them anywhere. Uh, some of the requirements, 21 foot ceilings, three inch feed. Uh, there's some electrical requirements as well, but none of which can be overcome in most urban cities. And we feel like we're gonna start there. Uh, there are, um, these I mentioned before, there, these are the two of the bottles we'll make. We'll make the uh, positivity or the 25, 24 ounce bottle. And this will be our three ounce, um, three liter bottle that we'll make uh, as well. And again, um, preform, ET, keep the plastic together. So that is my 30 second speech on investing in Starwalk Industries. It's not over, it's not over. Again, put your, um, I'm gonna have a link where you can talk to me one-on-one -on -one for 15 minutes to kind of go through the financials. Again, it's pretty straight line. You produce 32 million bottles, you sell them at you know 70 cents a profit, there's your money. I mean, all you have to ask yourself is can you sell water? One of the things that's limited me, I'll use my last minute to put the real bag on, is I, I cannot grow positivity and integrity more than what my manufacturer will allow me. 
every time I've gone into major contracts, you know, hey, we need a million cases, two million cases. I have to bring my manufacturer with me or I have to run it by them. So if I can't just go out and get a commitment for, you know, 30 truckloads a month, my manufacturer has to have capacity and budgets and things like that. So everyone in my position is only limited. They're only going to let you make so much as you can make. They're not going to let you produce as much as you want to produce. I can't get to the next level without having control of my own manufacturing. And same thing with us as a community. We're never going to be in control of our bottled water as long as somebody else is producing it. So with that being said, my 30 minutes is up. Anybody who wants to drop off can drop off. You're not obligated to stay after this, but I'll start answering some questions starting with the chat. And then uh, I guess I'll penalize the Facebook people too for not being on here and I'll stop the Facebook recording. Sean, no. do you have something you want to add? No, great job, great job. Very, very well done, very well done. So okay. do you want me to speak the questions out loud or are you just going to go through them? No, you can go through them. I'm going to stop the live stream. Yes. Okay. Bye, Facebook. All right, people. so Stephen J. <laughs> Stephen J says that we have some bottles to bring back. <laughs> Hey, good, bring them back. You know where you picked them up, bring them back. <laughs> okay. And then Stephanie Douglas said that she missed the point, but why do we have to look at our accounts in order to invest? Is there any way to invest without linking our accounts? No. So what happened is, remember I told you that there's two types of investors. There's the accredited investor and unaccredited investor. That's one of the ways they try to confirm who you are and how you're investing and who you are. When you link your account, it's just like an ACH though. They don't go into your account and see how much money you have. When they go to take the money out, they pull it out of your account like an ACH. So this is more like an Ameritrade account or a stockbroker account that you've had. You set up the account and you need to put money and they pull money out of your account and say, oh, I need another $500. I want to buy this stock. Same, same thing here. They attach to your account to confirm your identity and all these other things not necessarily to take money out at that time, but that's the way they get the money in. They do have a cash app option though. So if you have a cash app and you don't want them to ask, you don't want to link your account or log into your account, you can use a cash app. You, you should go through the list. There's a lot of other options. There's a credit card, I think. There's a lot of other options you can have them link to, but they wanna know when it goes public, hey, when that countdown clock goes down, I'm taking this money out of your account. But yes, unfortunately, that's just the way the system is built. And that's the way they sort of track their investments. Okay. And then Justin wants to know how long will constr uh, construction take once the site is identified? Great question. Uh, it takes about nine months. So assuming we're, we're starting with the location that already is built, I mean, excuse me, it's already uh, ready to go. And we just have to come in and order our chillers, compressors, blow mode machines. The equipment takes about six months to manufacture and have ready. And it takes about um, three months to get it prepped. So what will happen is you, you get a lease on the land, hopefully we can target July, and then we could actually have production start as early as April of last year, which is ideal because trying to sell water in the winter is literally trying to sell ice to Eskimo. So you really would like to have your start off, your plant start off in April. Also too, Justin, with that nine month lead time, you can actually start pre-selling. So in our industry around October, people will start putting together their packages for next year. So if I went to them and said, hey, I can get you this bottle for you know a dollar a bottle or 85 cents a bottle, wherever we come up with, would you take it come spring? And if we're in like the fall, they'll go, oh yeah, your plant's gonna open, sign me up. So you can actually sell out your capacity before your plant even opens because you can start selling as soon as you get, as soon as you break ground. There's another model in which we would build from ground up. It takes longer, two years, but I think we could probably do them simultaneously. The, um, there's a picture, the picture you see in wefunder.com, that's the ideal plant, right? Nice, pretty, big, um, but it's probably gonna be something less than that to start off if you wanna start to get the revenue flowing, but then later come on with other things. Also, we have our engineering services we're trying to sell to City of Atlanta, as well as the Flint. So we'll be ordering equipment for them, maybe, maybe, I mean, again, my plan is to start this showroom, if you will. This, there can be, in a major city, like I said, five to maybe 10 plants in different parts of the city that produces the water, but you need that showroom. Just like people don't believe you sell water today, drink the positivity. You need that showroom to start. And that's what this, found, this current round is designed to do is I've done with the theories. 
Let's go ahead and build it. Let's everybody see how efficient these machines run. Let's see how it works. Let's see how people treat it. And let's see how the community gravitates towards it. And then you walk all these municipalities through your site and say, hey, look at this, how this works. Only in Atlanta will be doing this. And then it starts to feed into it. Because right now we're selling concepts. And so, um, but yeah, nine months to answer your question. Josh says that he's ready to show you his money. <laughs> <laughs> and he says you know i'm down but i just thought show me the money <laughs> <laughs> listen I, I i it's one of the hardest things you've ever that that anyone uh has to do is to talk to their family and friends about money and again this isn't a donation i'm going to build this plant <laughs> i don't have a choice i want to get my super bowl trophy and i have to do it by doing it in manufacturing so i have to build this plant and i'm going to but I also want to do it not alone. I want to win the Super Bowl trophy with a team. I want to build this plant with a team. I want to live my life with a team. And I want people to come along this journey with me and have fun with it. So uh, hopefully people have some money left over from them stimulus check <laughs> that they want to put in. You know, I know you didn't spend it all already, right? You have a, that's why I wanted to get this out. I kept telling my staff, we have to go before the stimulus money gets spent. But hopefully you put it in and you do what you feel comfortable with for you and your family. You're betting on the team. So I can't answer exactly how this is all going to work out. You're just betting on the people to say, are these people that are going to be able to make the adjustments necessary when the problems come? And problems are going to come. I promise you, problems came today. They come all every day. But every day. the key is, do you have the staff to, to change it? Um, Mackenzie wants to know how many employees are in the company right now? She's, I'm sorry, went up. how many what? How many employees does the company have? We have one, two, three employees and probably about oh, another half dozen contractors. So just for those legally technical people out there, employees are the ones who get the W-2 and the contractors get a 1099. They don't have their payroll taken out, but together they, they're all considered part of the company. Um, but yeah, so we have about six or seven independent contractors and I think three employees, me, Shar, and Jada. Alexis uh, <clears throat> Davis Smith said, David, this is great. Black people spend $810 million on bottled water, I I'm assuming a year, uh, and we, we're almost 16% of the market. We should own it. Yes, and, you, and to add to that point, when I go to the International Bottled Water Association, where all these bottled water manufacturers come and they pay money for lobbyists to make sure you don't uh, you get your bottled water banned in, in, in national parks and things of that nature. When you look around the room, there's not a lot of people that looks like me. There's one sister that runs that works the front desk and she like, you know, hooks me up, let me get in sometimes for free, you know. <laughs> but other than that, there's not a lot of people that look like me when I go to these conventions. And it's sad because when we when it comes down to allocating bottled water, they're going to go with people who they do business with. They're going to put the, the put bottled water in the hands of the Walmarts. And that's why all those people have the water. And if you're, God forbid, your town you're in have a drought, you can forget about going to somebody else to try to get some water. Uh, you call me up, but I'm at the end of the day, I'm standing in line behind Walmart asking for my manufacturer to make some for me. And we don't have a seat at the water table at all at all and we run we have control over municipalities that sell water through the faucet but they're not collecting inventory they're not building you know hey you know what you're selling water why don't you bottle some and put it in a warehouse in case your citizens might have a boil alert and you tell them to go get bottled water and they go where you go i don't know just go get it instead you know instead of having a place where they can come and get some bottled water when their main breaks or whatever so i think that a lot of people once they understand the process behind bottling water and the process of taking municipal water and sending it through reverse osmosis and showing that, hey, this is just as good as any water that comes from Cleveland or Washington or Wisconsin, I think people will catch on and like, why am I paying this high price? Why am I shipping this all over the place? In Niagara, Nestle, Coke, what are you guys doing to get this bottle back? You don't, you mean, you, you go take these bottles back to Coke and see what they'll give you. <laughs> like put it right there in that blue bin. That brother will be here to pick it up any minute. So, you know, that's the way it is right now. And, you know, we're left, we're consuming it. We're, we're, we're buying it. Hell, we're carrying around and recycling, but we don't have any seat at the game. And I'm looking to change that. And Stephanie says that um, 
this is innovative and I love it. But David, I want to ask you a question that I think maybe is an important point that you do need to um, share with everyone. What happens if we um, don't meet the minimum requirements with WeFunder? Um, so do we, you know, are there minimum requirements? And why are you taking the time out to reach out to your family and friends? What is that minimum requirement? And I'm repeating myself, but what happens if we as a company don't meet that minimum requirement? Under? Sure. So WeFunder has, uh, uh, you know, they let you set it, but we set a minimum requirement of 100,000. There's two divisions in our company. One is obviously the distribution that we currently have and will keep. And the other one is the plant. 100,000 allows us to fund the distribution. I can pay that back. So the minimum that I've set is 100,000 that say, look, if we don't raise 100,000, forget it, you know, close the fundraise, I'll go out and do it through a Reg D offering and start over where I was going to start and we'll open up a plant spring after next. Um, but if you um, hit 100,000, they let you on a rolling basis take it after that. The next milestone we have to get to is about 3 million to have enough for the down payment on the plant and be getting to start shopping for locations. I've already been through this process once with locations. We found a great location, an excellent commercial realtor found us a good place. Engineers came out, construction came out, had SBA financing, had everything lined up, then went to the front door to the investors. And they're like, oh, well, we don't do this part of the funding. We do the later part of the funding. And everybody started to look at all these investors like, hey, you said you'd have this. You said you'd have this. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do this again without having my own money in my pocket separately. I'm not going to rely on these opportunity funds and new market tax credits. Listen, those people are great. And those people have the ability after you get a plant up and going to take out you know, your investors and get people paid off. But there's just not a lot of sources for early startup funding other than accredited investors. So when you talk about us not having a seat at the table, <laughs> imagine me going out and trying to sell this to people who already have a seat at the table. And I'm, they're like, why should I give you money and let you in? So I think that uh, in order for me to get true traction, uh, to get to that next level of 4.6 million, I think I just have to convince the people that I know. And I think we funder and most people will tell you that, hey, if you can't convince your family, then who, how are you going to convince the public? They know you best. <laughs> so that's important. David, I, I know you talked about the 100,000, but what does we find require of us, the company, before they go ahead and allow Starwalker to be presented to outside investors for them to help get us to the 100,000? What does it need from family and friends? What's the, the bottom, rock bottom uh, amount we need? Um, it's not so much the rock bottom. 100,000 gets us to, I said, the minimum level, and it also gets you that pre money valuation. Again, it's about, um, you get a, use about a two and a half times discount. So that 100,000 is just the, the key number you have to get to, right? And they don't let me do it. They don't let, you know, hey, Dave, you know, <laughs> you throw it in, I made it. And like, no, we want to see it come from outside people. That's again why they have that. Um, make sure the money comes from that bank account that you have set up, et cetera. And it's not me doing it. Um, and that's, that's designed to do it on purpose. But at this, at this stage, WeFunder does a lot of things from a legal perspective on the back end side. For example, they set up what's called a, pep, a special purpose vehicle that will collect all the funds from all the people and then essentially give it to the company or loan it to the company. And so we have one transaction with them and then they disperse any sort of payments we make throughout to the investors. So they do a good job of managing that. But in order to be listed on WeFunder and be public, what you're seeing now is not public. If you type WeFunder and go, oh, I talked to Dave, type Starwalker Industries, you won't find it. You have to have that link. And so they allow us to have that link. And it's a private link that only people who have it can use to go out. They also don't want us talking about the investment other than to send people there and read the stuff. That's why I had to talk, walk you through it, show you where everything is, the business plan, et cetera. Um, there are some things in there that, again, are going to change over time. But for the most part, you know, I think it's the meat of what I just said today is all in there. Okay. And then Kevin, the chemist, says, are you considering any technologies <laughs> upstream of reverse osmosis unit to decrease potential filtration or chemical treatment costs? Maybe hydrodynamic in combination with UV technologies commercially available. That was from a chemist. <laughs> yep. Kevin knows that uh, I got a job posting for him to deal with it. No, so Kevin, to answer your question, that's way above uh, my pay grade. 
Um, our engineers orders the reverse osmosis equipment through manufacturers and they gave us specs. In fact, that's one of the things I was doing today was kind of going through <laughs> the specs of our equipment that we're ordering, the blow mode machine, the reverse osmosis equipment. But yes, Kevin, you can attend that meeting with me. We can run that manufacturer through the ringer and make sure we're getting the most efficient, high quality, best in practice use of our filtration system. So to answer your question, I don't know why we're not doing that, but we are going to. <laughs> thanks for not asking the finance guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, ask a tougher question to that, though. <laughs> it's fine. And Jennifer says, great opportunity. Count me in. Kevin says, sounds good. Good, good. It looks like I met the bare, the bare minimum standard. I'm still surviving. The lights are back on. I feel good. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. I know everyone's probably uh, pretty disappointed that Michigan lost and sad and want to go to bed early. I know I do. <laughs> But, uh, you know, and, and at the end of the day, this is going to be a fun project. I think that if you guys are into any aspect of this project, you want to talk about specifically like Kevin, please hit the uh, call me link. You know, I have a link call.davidmwalkeresq.com that I give to people who want to set up 15 minute calls to go over it. If there's something I talk really fast. So if there's something that I said that caught your interest or you didn't quite reconcile, just let me know. I'm free. You can buy me a beer. I'll talk about it. You can shoot me an email. I'll talk about it. You can text me. I'll talk about it. And at the end of the day, before you all go, don't forget to think positive and drink positivity. Anyway, I'm Dave Walker. That's my pitch. Until next time, thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Can I speak now? Thank you.